I have this figure right here and it's working exactly how I want it to work where the size of the image is dictating how big it's going to be. And I'm just using my max width 100%. And the good thing with that is as we get smaller, we're responsive and everything is working as you'd expect it to. But there's a problem with the solution that we have right now is if we have more text in here, which can definitely happen with a fig caption, now it's the text underneath that's dictating how big it's actually going to be. And the more text we have, the wider it gets. And well, that sucks. And that's because a fit content is going to look at the content inside of the figure. And it will look at the biggest of the two of them, which in this case is my fig caption. And it's getting the width of this here. And I had this problem posed to me by Jeff Bridgeforth over on Blue Sky asking if there was a way to actually get this to work where the image is always dictating the width and not what we have down here. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, there's probably ways. Uh, one way that I thought of was actually to come in and say that we have a width of 100% on here uh, for the image. And then the image will just always fill the space, uh, which isn't what he wanted because he wanted the image to keep its natural size or shrink down if needed, but never to actually get bigger. So it didn't quite work. Uh, I also wondered maybe a min content here could potentially work, but you can see that's causing problems because now the image is shrinking down because the min content is based on the min content of our text and wasn't quite working. I, I struggled with it a little bit. I got like a half solution working and uh, we couldn't really get there. But because Jeff asked on Blue Sky, we actually ran into some good luck because a few other people jumped in the thread and it became a really interesting journey through potential solutions to this that I wanted to bring you on. And the first one that came in, uh, or actually Chris Coyer came in with sort of working on mine a little bit, but our, our thing was this is could work in some situations, but probably not the ones you want. But then luckily Nils Binder came in and sorry Nils if I didn't say your name correctly, um, but his solution, which I really liked, and it's not the final one, but this does work. I will say that, but we got some much simpler, or not simpler, this one's pretty simple actually, um, but other solutions that could work, which is a figure having a display of flex on it, the flex direction of column. So we just get it stacked this way and then a max width of min content. And this was really interesting because you can see that it's actually working and we don't need anything else on there. Uh, and that's great. And we can also do then a margin in line of auto to keep it in the middle left and right. So this is perfect and this could definitely work and you can take this away and be super happy with it. The reason I'm not stopping this video here is because there's some really cool things we're going to learn about intrinsic sizing that could work in other situations, including like, how do we just ignore the size of this text like or of an element? Can we have the size of an element not contribute to the overall size of something? And there is a way to do that, which I think is really neat. But let's look at why this one is working because we have a display of flex and we're switching the flex direction so the things stack. And then we're saying max width is min content. And this is this weird thing where because of the way the image is working is that max width of min content is the image is dictating the min content based on its intrinsic size. So the natural size of the image is the smallest that could get. So that's why there's, there's no actual size set on the image right here, but the image is now a flex item and it's allowed to shrink and it gets this weird sort of side effect where it's still responsive and is able to shrink and get smaller and bigger. And so, the image is dictating the size because min content means like we'd be looking at like one line of text here. And so, yeah, it works. It's fantastic. Where this could potentially be problematic is if it wasn't an image that's here and we had it something else. So I, I know we wouldn't really have a paragraph here, but let's just say we had a paragraph with lorem, I don't know, 25 or whatever. We had something else in here. Now, like we, we, we have these two different things and we're just looking at the min content of them rather than saying ignore the size of the fig caption just base the size on this here so i love nil's solution here uh i just there is that one limitation that i don't think you'd generally run into so i think like you're very safe using this most of the time uh it just so happens to work with how flexbox figures out images anyway i'm rambling now so let's move on to the next solution that came up because this was where things started getting a little bit more interesting. And it's when Anna Tudor came in. And I'm also gonna say that I'm gonna put a link in the description if you wanna see any of the code or reference any of the code as we're going through all of this. Uh, you can find all of it just linked in a blog post that Jeff put together that went through this entire journey as well. Uh, so here was Anna's solution, which as you can see, it works. Uh, and it's great and it does exactly what we want it to do. And it's based, we have a display grid. The important thing is we have the container type of inline size set on the parent here because she's using this trick here. So same idea, our width of the figure is set to the min content. 
And then we have this width of 400 pixels or 100 CQW. And we can't use viewport units for this. We really need container units for this to work. So we do need to have the container. I think the figure could actually be the container in this situation. I'm trying to think if that would work. Let's try that. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, now that I'm looking at it, uh, we need a semicolon here to make this work. Is that going to break it? Oh, that did break it because then the image goes to it's yeah okay so we do need that extra layer here but uh, what this is doing is we're saying the image is looking at what's smaller 400 pixels or 100 cqy or cqw and then as the container gets smaller it's going to shrink but then we sort of just set a maximum size on it with this right there and this works fantastically well and the width of min content is working similar to how it was working with nil's option where uh, the min content was then hitting like that intrinsic size of the image. So another potential solution right there that I thought was really cool, but th this opened up this container containment thing, which actually proved to be the solution that we really wanted. Because uh, next up it was Tamani Afif who came in with a solution. And what Tamani did was really interesting. So instead of having the outside containment, it's about the inside containment instead. So what he did here, we can get rid of all of this. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of all of this. And we're just gonna do the display of inline block. And the reason he did the display of inline block here is this is going to allow it to shrink to fit. And then inside of here, and this is the real magic, and there's one more step after this one, so don't leave when this one's done. Uh, but we had a fig caption, so we're getting the caption. This is the magic though, is saying contain inline size. And we're gonna see that, oh, it shrinks down and it does what we want it to do. Uh, though we do need the max width of 100% on the image in this case for it to work, which you probably have in your reset anyway. Uh, and then we get a responsive figure like what we were after from the beginning. And this is literally the line that I was thinking of that we needed that I didn't think existed in CSS when I first saw the question by Jeff. And why is because we're saying contain so we're using CSS containment, which I don't use very often. And so it's probably why I didn't think of it, but we're saying contain inline size, which means the inline size, which is basically the width of the element is not, it, it's not being defined by the content inside of it. So the fig caption is setting its own width and it's not paying attention to anything that's in there. The, the content of that element doesn't contribute to the size of the element itself. And so all of a sudden it does that. It says basically, ignore the content in here, we're gonna use the other things outside of here for the layout. And so, yeah, that I, really, really cool. Uh, the other thing though that you w might wanna have is that margin inline, so margin left and right of auto. And that doesn't work here because it's an inline block element. And so this is like that one limitation that sort of came in on this one, but luckily Stephanie Eccles then came in. I mean, talk about an all-star lineup of people helping out on this one. <laughs> and what that one is, is she said, well, you know, this is the, the, the key to this working. But then here, instead of a display of inline block, we don't need a display to keep the block display on there, but we can say an inline, inline size of fit content. And it goes back to one of the earlier solutions before, and then, so it, we're fitting the content on the outside to what's in there. And now it means follow the size of the image basically. And the image will also not expand beyond the size because of the way fit content works. Super, super cool. And so now we can have the fit content on the outside with the inline size on the element we want to ignore the size of. And then if we need it, the margin inline auto or other things can still work. So yeah, modern CSS is just so good and so fantastic. And I want to thank everybody who was part of this whole story. I hope you enjoyed going through it as much as I did as it happened in real time over on Blue Sky. So again, if you want to see this code, there is the link to Jeff's blog down below where he outlined this whole thing and linked to all of the original code pens and everything else. And if you like fun CSS tips and tricks like this and you're looking for other ones, I do have a playlist of them that is available for you to watch right here. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome Andrew, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.